Uh, so everybody, uh, join me in welcoming uh, Mr. Luba Simsambo. Um, he's, he's the one who's going to give the main part of this talk. Um, but um, we may have uh, uh, the direct ICT in the ministry uh, perhaps uh, say something towards the end or something about, uh, about the talk itself, what is some portion of the talk, which is idea is supposed to have been given at the beginning. Um, just a bit of background, uh, Luasi. So the, the MS, MSP 5012 course is, is actually um, is a half course. Which, which is uh, a, a mandatory uh, part of the social protection management, well, it's, a, it's tagged social protection management information system and it's part of the newly introduced program in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences um, referred to as the Master of Arts in Social Protection. Um, so our colleagues attending this class are actually part of the very first cohort of the course itself. Um, incidentally, I don't sit, um, or well, I'm not in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, but um, I helped design the module itself, uh, the course, um, and, and so I was invited to, to co-teach it. So we're co-teaching this together with a colleague, uh, Chitundu Mwila. Um, just to also mention up front that one of the reasons why we, we, we have these talks, uh, there's a couple of reasons actually, but the main reasons being, uh, number one, um, in our view, it's, it's a perfect way of trying to, um, to foster collaboration between academia and industry, right? Uh, I don't know about these other disciplines, but what we've noticed in the field of ICTs, for instance, is there is this disconnect between uh, what those practicing, uh, what those in industry, those on the ground are doing, and what, what, what researchers such as myself um, are up to. So the idea behind this is possibly, as, as we invite people to come and give talks, um, maybe some of our colleagues enrolled into these, these advanced degree programs might use that as an opportunity to identify um, potential areas within which they can conduct research. Um, and, and in fact, we've been quite successful in terms of collaboration in the past. Um, I think beginning some two years ago, we've actually been working with colleagues from the Invest Teaching Hospitals, Department of Radiology, um, and, and our interaction with them be, began just, just as we are interacting with you right now. Uh, so, so we are hoping that perhaps, uh, if possible, um, as you're giving this talk, maybe towards the end, you can highlight some of the potential uh, open areas in, in this particular space, right? So areas that you know, our colleagues can take advantage of as they're thinking about what it is they're going to be doing next year. Uh, I was just checking the calendar just now. Um, beginning February, I think most of them will be required to start is it defending or presenting their proposal uh, documents, right? So. So there you go. Um, so in terms of introductions, I'm just going to briefly introduce uh, uh, Luas. Luas he currently works in the uh, uh, ministry as principal officer in charge of the social cash transfer management information system. That's the Ministry of Community Development and, um, and Social Services. Um, but it turns out that uh, uh, Luas Recently, a few years ago, I suppose, uh, graduated with a Master of Engineering in ICT Security from the University of Zambia. Um, he also holds a Bachelor of Science with honors from the University of uh, ooh, Hertfordshire. This is nice. Um, uh, he, in addition, he has an Advanced Diploma in Business Information Systems, which was awarded by the Association of uh, Business Executives. Um, he, he, Additionally, has uh, certificates in uh, the professional computing and information process, and also network fundamentals and network security. Um, he's been instrumental in management and implementation of the serial cash transfer uh, in the ministry, um, and so it would be interesting actually to um, to hear more um, about what that is all about, because the, in essence, what that's that's what the the talk is centered around. Um, uh, we, I, I don't know what your preference is, Louis. Maybe we can hold on to questions until we are done with the presentation. Uh, you should expect a lot of questions because um, they account towards the overall score. So people will probably be interested in finding out more about the talk itself. Is it fine if they ask questions towards the end, or do you prefer that they uh, pe people can interrupt you as you are giving the presentation? No, I, I I think we can push the questions towards the end. Beautiful. I've seen Dr. Dr. Perry is calling. Let me just pick up his call. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so doc, uh, Dr. Piri will not join us. Um, okay. He has failed to join. Uh -huh. That's uh, that's fine. Thanks. Um, all right. So without further ado, I, I think the floor is yours, Louis. Uh Please, you can go ahead and. Uh, uh, okay. At your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm not sure and if it's just uh, me though. Uh, could people confirm the the presentation? Is it clear on your end? I, I see it's a bit blurry. Okay. There we go. Okay. Fine. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Doc has already said, my name is Louis Sambo. I work in the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services in the MIS unit. Okay, so my principal job is essentially is MIS technical advisor. I provide advisory services in automation. So today we'll look at um, essentially the automation of the social cash transfer program. Um, we've packaged uh, this presentation in um, eight different uh, templates. So we'll look at mind maps so that we try and understand how the social cash transfer program runs so that we see the programming. Then we'll look at the ZISPIS, how the ZISPIS plugs into the social cash transfer. So we have a ZISPIS mind map, then we'll look at the modules that sit on the ZISPIS and uh, the security posture of the ZISPIS. Um, number five is important because uh, Zambia is um, being introduced to the world of cybercrime. So I think it's also good to try and see how we're trying to secure uh, beneficiary details and payment details. Um, then we'll look at the potential ecosystem that the ZISPIS uh, promises to bring on the scene in automating um, the government. Then we'll look at legality and um, the planned rollout of this system and, and we'll close with the potential impact of this system. So we can start by looking at the ACT uh, mind map. So the ACT mind map tries to show us uh, essentially how the social cash transfer program runs. We can start with the quick facts. The program itself started around 2003 with 169 beneficiaries who were getting about $1.5 then or seven or 30 quarter. We grew the program over time to today. Our current case load stands at 973,323 households. So if you count the members in those households, you have something like 5,061,000 and somewhere there. This shows us that the social cash transfer program is 30% of the population of Zambia. So in terms of impact, we, um, the impact of the program is on 30% of the population of Zambia. It's a big program. Then um, we pay out to the beneficiaries who sit on the program in a bi-monthly uh, framework. So we give them a 400 quarter or an 800 quarter depending on uh, the disability. So an individual is disabled to get 800 quarter. Then uh, every time we pay out countrywide, we spend about 458 million quarter or somewhere around $23 million. So this is how much the program churns out every two months. This is a lot of money. And if you look at our total expenditure in a year, it's a lot of money. Then um, we are everywhere in the country. We're in all the districts, in all the provinces. Then further, um, if we lo continue looking at our facts and other areas of interest, the program, the social cash transfer program, expanded slightly into what we call vertical social cash transfers and horizontal social cash transfers. So in order for you to understand this, you will say, or you look at this from this uh, angle. So, the whole country practices social protection. So social protection of your umbrella. Directly under that, you have the social cash transfer program. Now, there are other programs which are slightly similar to the social cash transfer program. Okay? So this program that sit on the same table as the social cash transfer program are the ones that you are going to refer to as horizontal programs. So we have horizontal programs and we have vertical programs. So we have vertical social protection and we have um, horizontal social protection. An example would be last year we conducted what we call the COVID emergency 
um, cash transfer. So the COVID emergency cash transfer targeted to start with individuals that sit on the social cash transfer program and we extended it to individuals who do not sit on the social cash transfer program. Now, because the social protection or the social intervention was um, monetary based and implemented the same framework as the social cash transfer, it qualified to be referred to as a horizontal program. So we have horizontal and vertical uh, programs that we also run. Some of the innovations that we've put in place as a ministry is the development of the ZISPIS or the Zambia Integrated Social Protection Information System. We carried out pilot uh, tests in Kitwe and Namara. The ZISPIS itself pledges to pay a fund or an SCT grant to a beneficiary. Individuals or households that receive a fund referred to as a social cash transfer fund can be paid in one of two options. You can get your fund via what we call the urban payment or you can get your fund via what we call the rural payment. In an urban payment, this implies that this beneficiary or household is in a telco zone, meaning the area where you are is serviced by telephone. You have access to internet, you have access to a bank, you have access to mobile money services. So for this individual, we can pay that individual directly into your bank account or your mobile money wallet. So such a beneficiary and such an area, the ministry uh, classifies such an area as urban. Um, then we have rural settings. In rural settings, these are beneficiaries that are resident in non-telco zones. We don't have phones, we don't have internet in these areas. So for such beneficiaries, we will still proceed to pay them using a pay point manager. Payment managers are teachers, they are nurses, they are government employees who get a fund through the district social welfare office and proceed to pay beneficiaries over the table. The model for using payment managers is referred to as rural because the ministry or government does not pay to the beneficiary directly. Um, it is the hope of government that we can strip out this uh, rural a model and leave out only the urban model. We have so far integrated with this piece nine payment service providers that's Airtel, Atlas Marine, Dozambia, all the way up to uh, Zone. Okay, then um, we have uh, further innovations that we've put up as a ministry is to put in place what we call a grievance mechanism system. So, the grievance mechanism system is simply uh, a framework that we put in place to collect complaints around the social cash transfer or complaints around governance in this country. So any individual who is aggrieved can approach our office and report. Remember, from the quick facts, we are everywhere in this country, all CWACs. If you look at the CWAC, this is the lowest geographical administrative level in this country. This is a group of houses. So we are operating all the CWACs, all the words it is in this country. Therefore, we can easily collect complaints that affecting government operations. Also, as a ministry, we performed or carried out emergency cash transfers, and um, the biggest one we undertook is the COVID emergency cash transfer, where we targeted over 200,000 beneficiaries. All these beneficiaries were given a mobile phone, and they were paid their fund directly, irrespective of their position or their areas. Some of the successes are that we're able to pay out on a bi-monthly basis, we also notice that this social intervention actually appears to improve the lives of our beneficiaries. We also see that in the areas where we are paying these local economies appear to improve. Some of the problems we have are that we cannot pay all the beneficiaries electronically. Then we have been, all our beneficiaries do not have mobile phones, so it becomes difficult, it becomes a divide for us to be able to give them. And the fund. We also lack integration with other government systems for us to carry out things like KYC uh, properly. Okay, then um, you might also have heard we had an incident sometime last year. One of our payment managers was murdered, and uh, this is also one of the problems that we, as a ministry, were trying to resolve. And the only way we we'll resolve it is to make sure that we have urban payments throughout. Who qualifies to sit on the program? Or disabled individuals, female-headed households. This is a woman who is not married, but has at least three children and is vulnerable. 
child headed this is a person who is under 19 years and is vulnerable we have aged these are people over 65 years we have critical ill and on palliative care we are looking at people who are extremely sick maybe you have um, cancer etc which is very advanced or individuals who apply to sit on the program are subjected to what we call the PMT. Proxy means test, which is an assessment of a person's wealth. This assessment will give you a score. If a score is above a threshold, you will not qualify to sit on the program. If a score is below a threshold, you will qualify to sit on the program. Remember, I said that our program classifies individuals in one of two, rural or urban. Therefore, going by our PMT rules, rural and urban receive different scores. Now, how do we bring people onto the program? We carry out an enumeration process. Uh, on your screen are six common stages that we have in our enumeration. Uh, when we expand this, they'll come into 13 stages. So before we can bring an individual onto the program, we carry out a, uh, an awareness or community sensitization countrywide. So in all districts, you will have Zanis moving around, announcing that we're enumerating or we're carrying out listing. Then uh, individuals who feel or believe are vulnerable will approach the district office to have their name listed. This is just registration of your name. It does not qualify an individual to sit on the program. Once you're listed, there is what is called a community validation. In a community validation, all names that have been collected will be printed out, stuck on communal places within communities, and people have to verify the names and the details that are put there so that attempts to correct these details can be made. Also, the community has a say at this point. Okay, for instance, if Dr. Lighton Piri volunteered himself as wanting to sit on the program at stage two, the community might say, no, do not put him on the program. He does not qualify because he can fend for himself. So at that stage, you can be dropped. If you pass stage two, you'll be subjected to stage three, which is the enumeration. At this point, will send enumerators to your household. Your house, they will look at your house, living conditions, get images of you, your NRC, and then you will be subjected to about 252 questions that you have to answer. All the questions are pulled into what is called a proxy means test or assessment. So um, this assessment I already explained it. Should you pass your result? will be sent back to the district at number five, community validation. At this stage, the community may say, may vote to remove you from the program or may accept and approve the result. So should you pass stage five, you will form part of the final list and you are enrolled in the program. The ZISPIS performs eh, all stages on your screen apart from two and five, because two and five, uh, manual. Uh, the only thing we we'll do from this space is to print out the list, and then these now will be stuck on communal places, and the communities now will have a stay on what they want. Stage five is semi-automated in the sense that whatever the community says, whatever result we get, we we'll enter it into the space, and it will determine if a person can be enrolled on the program or not. Our third mind map is the ZISPIS itself. So the ZISPIS has um, a number of different modules. So we have beneficiary modules, we have uh, debt support, we have payment, we have M and E, we have grievance redress, we also have uh, nutrition support uh, modules. So if we look at, um, for instance, the 1000 days nutrition support module, this particular module is targeted at providing social intervention, social protection intervention to pregnant and lactating mothers and children under two. In short, we target the first 1000 days of life. Here, the ministry or the government is trying to see how much money is needed to support a child and a woman or a mother in the first 1,000 a day. So we carried out tests in uh, four districts. We have Mpika, Kalabo, Chipata, and Lunga. And we determined that 
if we look at the local foods in those areas, we can actually package a local food in 75 kwacha. So when you look at local foods, we're not looking at what is prevailing here in Lusaka where people are buying pears and apples. No, we're looking at what is going on in Mpika, the foods that people eat. So we sent in there a nutritionist who studied these foods and they gave us advice on which food is actually nutritious and the total value came to 75 kwacha. So we're testing this to see how it works. And then we have data support services. You might also uh, be interested to know that the ministry provides support to NIMA. Uh, we have the Ministry of Education, we have the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban uh, Development. So for NIMA, we provide information on all the vulnerable people who must receive health assurance for free. For KGS, we provide information on girls that come from vulnerable households that need to be looked after. So for these, they get an education grant. So things like uniforms, books, etc. they are taken care of. SWL will provide information on women who are vulnerable across the country so that these women can be assisted in uh, things like, um, I'm sure you know, village banking, cooperatives, and the like. From the Ministry of Infrastructure and Urban Development, we provide information to them on elderly individuals who are vulnerable that, that lack housing and accommodation. The Ministry of, Urban, of, of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development has been, is going to be building houses for these individuals. We also have a monitoring and evaluation information system, which is part of this, this piece. Purpose of this is to carry out uh, monitoring on the SCT program to try and advise programming or changes to programming. Then we have um, our grievance redress. I talked about this, where we collect uh, complaints across board enumeration. The second slide, the mind map on enumeration, we have that, that one will qualify to come into beneficiary onboarding and mechanics or enumeration. So the stages covered there are undertaken at one. Then uh, the ZIS piece itself is capable of making payments to a beneficiary in three ways, traditional, semi-automated, and fully automated. So if you look at traditional, this is how social cash transfer has been running. And we are attempting to change that this year going forward. Um, so in the traditional, you have a pay point manager who will be given cash and will proceed to pay a beneficiary over the table. In uh, number two, we have a pay point manager who will be given cash and will proceed to pay a beneficiary. The addition here is we have created, we have developed a mobile application that will track the payment. With this mobile application, we can know where this beneficiary has been paid and who paid this beneficiary when the beneficiary was paid. We also have official, uh, we have an image of the beneficiary. Then in the final one, the fully automated one, we can pay a fund directly to a beneficiary using any of the nine payment service providers. We have Zamtio Bank, ABC, Indozambia Bank, MTN, Zona, Zanako, UBI, and Natsi participating in this exercise. Some of them are still in the process of uh, bidding and trying to see if they can qualify to participate in this. The advantage a beneficiary has with this type of payment is that you get your fund directly okay there's no other person to get the fund for you um in our first slide i said we have five categories of people qualifying to be on this program one of those categories is critically ill and another one is disabled disabled severely disabled some of these cannot move and because of that they send a proxy to receive the fund on their behalf this proxy is referred to as a deputy. We have had instances where the proxy walks away with the fund. So we can stop all that by paying the beneficiary directly respective of where they are using the payment service providers. Also with this one, we improve program integrity because we're paying directly to the beneficiaries and all this goes away. Then um, what are the modules that we've put up on this space? We have beneficiary and household registration and enrollment modules, 
this module helps us bring a new beneficiaries onto the program. We have business intelligence modules. Business intelligence modules help us study the data that we have. We can do analytics and we can further study the information for other usage. Um, in this one in particular, there is NEMA and Ministry of Urban uh, Infrastructure and Urban uh, Development who have been studying this information to pick out only those that we feel are extremely uh, vulnerable. The ZISPIS comes with a Kibana dashboard analytics and elastic search. Elastic search is a, um, a search engine that is um, plugged into the ZISPIS. The advantage with this is it's a search engine. It works like Yahoo, Google, or Bing. Therefore, it can do a wider search on the information using almost any variable that we have. Uh, and it gives us flexibility in the search uh, as opposed to indexing information by just text, particular text. We also have the ZISPIS Payment Gateway. Now, the ZISPIS Payment Gateway is um, is uh, the part of the ZISPIS that is uh, non-viewable. This one does not come with a UI or user interface. You actually have to access it via the CLI or command line interface. Uh, the ZISPIS Payment Gateway is what plugs into all payment service providers or banks so that we are able to transfer the fund to the beneficiary. Um, there is a lot of security around the ZISPIS Payment Gateway and this architecture. Then we have um, integrator modules. We have the Client API Frame. So the Client API Frame is essentially developed in uh, Java. Uh, Java and uh, Spring Boot and Spring Boot and Spring. We have a lot of Spring frameworks that we have here to allow us to plug in to almost any other information system. So we have a lot of Spring frameworks to help us here. And we have our payment gateway. Further on our modules, we have all payment mechanism modules so we can generate payments for beneficiaries. We can create a payment for a CWAC, for a district, for a province, depending on uh, what we want, we can actually segment beneficiaries, we can pay only rural beneficiaries, we can pay urban beneficiaries. So the ZISPIS is capable of managing all these types of uh, payments. We can localize the payments, meaning you can pay within a district, pay within a province, pay within a CWAC only. We are able to do this. Then uh, on the 1,000 days uh, side, the 1,000 days, though it's a module on this piece, it operates like it's a standard information system on its own. It can carry out registration and listing, it can run its own proxy means tests on pregnant, like teaching and um, children. And it can also enroll, it can generate reports, and it can carry out payments. The only difference here is... Eh, the 1,000 days MIS cannot pay directly to a beneficiary. When it generates a payment, it passes that payment to the main ZISPIS, which will now pass that information to the ZISPIS payment gateway. We have our geo management module, which allows us to uh, basically map Zambia. We can create a logical map of Zambia. We have the entire logical map for Zambia that we use to identify these areas. Our map is so good that Right now, we have other government ministries who have come to request for it so that they can align their entire geography with what we have. This piece also allows what is called geo restriction. Uh, in geo restriction, it means eh, um, the district social welfare officer for Lusaka cannot see what is happening in Chama district. The district social welfare officer for Lusaka is only restricted to what is happening in Lusaka. This piece also comes with role, role management, meaning. The, what the district social welfare officer can approve, the assistant cannot approve. Then um, security posture. In here, we have one, a multi-factor authentication model that the ZISPIS uses. We have an authenticator via um, uh, Google Authenticator. We have your inheritance uh, models. Okay, so you can put your username, you can put your password, then you have your multi-factor. Uh, authentication that was running there. Then in, when we look at the data sets, how they are kept, some of the information is kept in polynomials. So we have um, a polynomial data storage and uh, um, since this is an information science class, I'm sure you know that 
to convert an exponent to a polynomial is the hardness of a mathematical problem. So this is deliberate to make sure that it's difficult, literally difficult for someone to be able to convert the information that you have. Even if we gave you the database for this piece, all you will see there will be numbers, will be funny letters now to convert it into text. When we look at our conversion, uh, conversion time, we calculated that 810 years based on a 3 gigahertz machine. So we also have a one-time pad that runs via our authenticator. And uh, this one is calculated 158 years cover time. Then uh, for user IDs, all user IDs are kept in polynomial constants uh, with our cover time of uh, 810 years. Then uh, we have uh, anthropometrics that are applied on faces. This one allows us to carry out uh, uh, anthropometric measurement for all the beneficiaries getting paid. So as we pay the beneficiary, we get a visual image of this uh, beneficiary. So we've got both the physical side of the um, security and we've got the logical side of the security. You can ignore the formula. That formula is what we're using for our cover time to determine these years that we have there. Then um, when we move information from this payment gateway to any payment service provider, we have put in place, um, I'm sure you know, data at rest and data in motion. So in either case, we have put in place some security okay, that is running there. We have different uh, security models that run for each payment service provider. Okay, So each service provider, some use HTTPS, some use other, other, other models that I will not disclose here. Then we have um, a server security we have put in place. So the ZISP sits behind four firewalls, yeah, four firewalls to ensure that eh, we don't have people accessing this ZISP. The payment gateway also, this payment gateway sits behind two firewalls. So we've tried to ensure that we can have uh, sufficient security that we can have. One of the firewalls that we have put there performs spontaneous routing to ensure that the IP address that you get now is not the same IP address you get the next time you log in. Um, then we have, for physical security, we have biometric uh, barriers to ensure that people do not get access to the servers. Anyhow, we have physical barriers also put in place. We also have uh, retention mechanisms such as uh, CCTV, ETC, and all that. Then, um, yeah, I think that's all on this security. Then, what is our potential ecosystem? So, should the ZISPs run properly in the way that we see it, we hope that the ZISPs can integrate with uh, within the ministry, the Department of Planning and Information, and within the ministry, we have the Navision or the Microsoft Dynamics uh, 365 application. So, with this one, it is also hoped that we can plug in to the Ministry of Finance via the Dynamics. Um, the architecture running on um, Java and XML has been designed. We just need to find time to see how we can implement this. We also expect that we can integrate this piece with uh, the DMIS. The DMIS is the master database the country uses for all disabled individuals. Why are we doing this? Part of the beneficiaries that sit on uh, the social cash transfer program must be disabled. We also hope that we can plug in the ZISPs to the Minister of Finance, Minister of Health, Education, Minister of Home Affairs, and the Minister of Labor. Why are we doing this? So that we can cross-check identities of people. We can also cross-check to see which services Zambians are receiving. Uh, if you go to the Ministry of Health and you receive um, any health service, are you sitting on NIMA? Is the NIMA that you are receiving part of the social uh, protection assurance? So we would want to see all this from this uh, integration. What is the legality of the, this piece and the planned rollout? So if you look at our rollout plan, Zambia has 116 districts and all the districts have been trained in the use of the ZISPIS. All the provincial centers have been trained in the use of this piece. All data migration from all the 116 districts has been undertaken. It's complete. I think 
two months ago or so we finished our data refinement and we are good to go we have secured clearance from smart zambia who are the regulators of all giver e-government systems we have also secured uh, clearance from treasury to allow us pay beneficiaries across the country so these two certificates we are good to go we have completed our uh, tests in Kitwe and Namala. Then when you look at adherence of this program, the ZSPIS tries as much as possible to abide by the social cash transfer guidance of 2018. We also try to abide by the social cash transfer grievance redress mechanism guidelines of 2018. We are also trying as much as possible to abide by the Data Protection Act of 2021, ECTA laws of Zambia, the electronic Communication Transaction Act 2021, we have the Cyber Security Cyber Crimes of 2021 of the laws of Zambia. We are also trying as much as possible to abide by the best practice standards, such as those in the ISO 27000 series for information security, and those four are biometrics in 24745. The biometric standard is being considered actively, and we're trying to see if we can plug it in. Right now, the ZSPIS has got a machine learning architecture that is ready to, to work with the biometric framework. We're just trying to see which one will be cheaper and which one we can work with before we can go uh, flat out. Potential impact of the ZSPIS, we expect secure social cash transfer transactions. Should this be successful? And then we have uh, improved the social cash transfer program perception i'm sure we have seen that we have a lot of negative perceptions around the program so with this piece we hope this can uh, improve improved business intelligence or reporting is also one of them that is expected we expect better planning because we will know how many beneficiaries are there where are they and what time we can pay them this this piece will also help the government of zambia be automated we can generate reports on the go at any given time we're able to tell who has been paid where and when we have our m and e uh, that will help us in carrying out the program control okay then um with that said chair we are done and i submit thank you oh wow uh, thank you so very much uh Lewis, uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm hoping our our colleagues uh, enjoyed it as much as as much as I did. Now, I, I just I regret not having circulated this widely. Um, I know for a fact that there are colleagues uh, elsewhere in the in the university community that perhaps would have been really interested in this, um, especially colleagues in the Department of Computer Science, seeing as there was there was some sort of um, focus on the technical aspect of what's happening. Uh, I was taking note of questions. I have so many questions, but um, <coughs> I'll hold on to them. Um, uh, we'd like to first of all invite our colleagues that are enrolled into MSP 5012 because they're doing this for credit. Uh, just a reminder to our colleagues that uh, in as much as we haven't really got into a stage where we've covered uh, things to do with interoperability, like for instance, when Lubasi was making reference to how this piece is interfaced with, uh, you know, the payment gateway, for instance, right, um, and how they envision, you know, this piece to be uh, connected or to be interfaced with the disability register or something, um, there's still quite a bit that has been done already, right? Um, so the floor is open. Um, please uh, go ahead and uh, ask your questions if you have specific questions. <coughs> 